Gambino underboss Agnello Neil De La Croce was a mob luminary who was a major force in the underworld. He garnered tremendous respect from all of his associates and underlings and his influence extended worldwide. Yet unbeknownst to many is that Agnello had an older brother named Carmine who he was very close with and was also involved in organized crime. So who was Carmine De La Croce? Carmine James de la Croce was the first child born to Francesco de la Croce and Antoinette Vecchione on December 2nd, 1905 in New York City. He spent his early years living on the 200 block of Mott Street in the Little Italy section of Manhattan. At around three years of age, Carmine was stricken with polio, which resulted in a condition called poliomyelitis, also known as infantile paralysis, which left his right leg almost completely paralyzed. When Carmine was five years old, his mother took him to live in Italy to receive treatment for his condition. There he was treated with mud baths, which at the time was thought to be able to cure infantile paralysis. He stayed in Italy for about four years, then returned to New York City where he lived at 232 Mulberry Street with his brother on yellow and his sister Lucy. Carmine's badly damaged right leg was not cured by his treatment, and he attended various schools in New York City for disabled children, and he would be crippled for the rest of his life. Carmine dropped out of school in seventh grade and got involved in criminal activities. In 1922, at the age of 17, Carmine was charged with grand larceny and received a suspended sentence. In 1925, at the age of 19, he was charged with rescuing a prisoner from jail and received another suspended sentence. For the next decade, Carmine flew under the radar and stayed out of trouble. However, his younger brother wasn't doing the same. Agnello de la Croce was beginning his own life of crime, and in 1930, at the age of 16, he logged his first arrest for a store burglary and was sentenced to two and a half years at Elmira Reformatory. In 1931, Carmine got married at the old St. Patrick's Cathedral on Mulberry Street, which is just steps away from the spot which would one day become the Ravenite Social Club, the headquarters for the Gambino family. In 1936, Carmine proved that while one of his legs might be useless, his hands weren't. He was charged with felony assault for allegedly beating a man with a hammer and was sentenced to six months in prison. By the late 1930s, both Carmine and Agnello were associated with the Mangano family, ran by boss Vincent Mangano. Agnello had been working as a hitman in the family, operating with a squad of killers known as Murder Incorporated, and was quickly rising up the ranks. Carmine, on the other hand, ran a big bookmaking operation for the family. He was arrested and fined several times for bookmaking charges throughout the 1940s. In 1951, the Mangano family had become the Anastasia family after Vincent Mangano disappeared and Albert Anastasia took over as boss. Both Carmine and Agnello remained involved with the family under its new leadership. In the late 1940s, Carmine moved to Valley Stream on Long Island. He worked in the wholesale meat business. Organized crime was heavily involved in the meat industry. They had control in the Meat Cutters Union and received payments from supermarkets to ensure labor union peace. They used their meat stores in a widespread system of payoffs, kickbacks, and money laundering and added mobsters to their company payroll so they could appear to have legitimate jobs. Paul Castellano, who was also part of the Anastasia family with Carmine and Agnello and would one day become the boss of the family, was building his own empire of meat businesses in and around New York City. Carmine operated a company named Republic Meat Market. His business sold to mostly Italian restaurants and nightclubs in the Lower East Side neighborhood of Manhattan. Carmine had five children, three daughters and two sons. His oldest son was Frank De La Croce and his youngest was Carmine James Jr. Frank De La Croce was often in trouble with the law and was arrested several times in his teens for offenses such as unlawful assembly and looting. In 1958, Carmine's other son, Carmine James de la Croce Jr., was killed in a car accident at the age of 17. 
After Albert Anastasia was killed in 1957, the family leadership would change yet again, and Carlo Gambino would soon become the new boss of the family, which would from then on be known as the Gambino family. Carmine and Daniello continued business as usual under the rule of Carlo Gambino. The Della Croce brothers were often seen together at the Ravenite Social Club on Mulberry Street, and they remained very close throughout their lives. Carmine was also known to associate with Gambino mobsters Charlie Delutro, Michael Cirelli, and Carmine Consalvo. He was also very well acquainted with the captain of his crew, Armand Tommy Rava. Rava was a rival to Carlo Gambino and vied for the position of the family boss for a period of time after the killing of Anastasia until Rava himself was killed on the orders of Carlo Gambino. Carmine Della Croce earned the nickname Chicago Jim of undetermined origins. In 1962, he was charged with accepting bets for sports events, but was acquitted. In October of 1964, he was arrested for a consorting charge, along with his brother Agnello and Joseph Gennaro, known as Joe the Wop, who was a soldier in the Gambino family. In this full-length shot of Carmine, you can notice his diminutive lower half and atrophied legs. In 1965, Agnello Della Croce rose to underboss of the Gambino family and became one of the most respected and powerful mobsters in the country. Throughout most of his career in organized crime, law enforcement was only aware of Carmine's bookmaking activities and didn't know him to be involved in any other rackets. In the latter part of his life, Carmine mainly focused on his meat business while engaging in bookmaking on the side. On January 6, 1969, Carmine de la Croce passed away from medullary failure at the age of 63 in an osteopathic hospital in Dallas, Texas. He was interred at the Cemetery of the Holy Rood in Westbury, Long Island. In May of 1973, Carmine's oldest son, Frank de la Croce, drowned in a boating accident off the waters of Jones Beach on Long Island and died at the age of 37. His body wasn't discovered until a few weeks later, over 90 miles away at the Jersey Shore. Carmine de la Croce is a nearly unknown figure to most mob fans, but surely he possessed that de la Croce gangster bloodline. Even being a cripple didn't stop him from handling his business in the streets. On the outside, he was a minor player compared to his brother, but considering his powerful nexus, perhaps he was a bigger player on the inside than we will ever know. Carmine de la Croce took to the mobbed up streets of Little Italy well before his younger brother Agnello did, and had a hand in schooling what would become perhaps the most powerful underboss in mafia history.